Good evening, everyone. I'm Sean Duffy. And I'm Jackie DeAngelis. In for Dagan McDowell. Welcome to the bottom line. And here we go. It's the squad versus the good guys. Moments from now, the House is expected to take action on three of its biggest newsmakers of late. What we're watching tonight, the resolution to censure Congresswoman Rashida Tlaib, who has recently tossed aside all facts, all reason to continue painting Israel as a monster. If you're in need of a refresher, this was the final straw that got her to this moment, riling up anti-Israel protesters outside of the Capitol earlier this month. And that's what's been really painful. It's just, just continue to watch people think it's okay to bomb a hospital where children you know what's so hard sometimes is watching those videos and and the people telling the kids don't cry and like let them cry and there are protesters who actually took over the capital we might add yeah Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene is the lead voice calling for censure, sharing with the bottom line why this is so important. She should be held accountable and she will be held accountable. Not only is she a liar, she's a great actress, just like the protesters, or maybe we should call them insurrectionists, that came in the Cannon House building where my office is yesterday. And they even, they took over, they were completely coordinated, they had practiced and they knew what they were doing. But no good deed goes unpunished. Green herself, consequently, is up for center tonight as well. Also of note, the House has been debating whether to expel Congressman George Santos, and this afternoon uh, we'll also vote on that tonight as well. And in true Washington fashion, we can't rule out that it's very possible that nothing happens. Nothing happens. <laughs> All right, for the centers against Tlaib and Green, the House will first vote on a motion to table both issues, meaning the resolutions are pushed to the side and probably forgotten forever. And no one has to vote on whether they're for or against censures. And most importantly, the American people don't get a record of who in Congress is for or against Tlaib spewing anti-Israeli lies. All right, for more on this, he can break down all the lies and all the censuring. Let's bring in the floor to Congressman Greg Stubbe. Congressman, good to see you. So tell hey, us... Good to see you. I, again, a lot of things happening in the world, but we're going to deal with censures tonight. On. What's yeah. going to happen with, with Tlaib Green and George Santos? Uh, that's a great question, and I don't, standing right here, I don't, I don't know the answer to any of those because I think we have people on both sides of the aisle who are going to vote for different portions of this. Um, I do think it will go to a vote on Santos, but he needs two-thirds in order to be removed. I don't think you'll get there. Uh, I certainly won't vote to expel him because... I thought we were in a country where you were innocent until proven guilty. There hasn't been any findings from the ethics investigation. Uh, until we have actual facts before us and not just allegations, I think it would be wholly premature uh, to expel a member once either he pleads guilty or if there is an adjudication or there's findings by an ethics commission. I think that determination is much different. Um, but he's, he needs two-thirds to get removed. I don't know if that happens. On the Tlaib uh, censor resolution, there's a motion to table before that and I do know that there's members on our side of the aisle that aren't going to vote to censor her so they may vote to move to table it so I, I honestly don't know how these are going to shake out tonight but uh, we'll see in in probably an hour or so it's pretty riveting stuff um, it would be interesting to see if there were a vote if she was actually reprimanded congressman she serves on three committees she would be stripped potentially of those positions um, there have to be some consequences right for actions like yeah, there, hers yeah absolutely i 100 percent support the resolution by marjorie taylor green uh to censor rep to leave for basically inciting uh, a mob who came in here to the capitol right behind me actually is where they were uh, against house rules there was a insurrection if you want to call it that and these individuals that are leftists are going to be treated very differently than those on january 6 by a politicized and weaponized doj you know, just on uh, Jordan, uh, George Santos, again, yes, he has lied, but if that's a standard for removing members of Congress for lying, half the body is going to be gone because everybody lies in Congress. <laughs> and also, Republicans need his vote. He votes with the Republican team. You have a four or five seat majority. You can't lose George Santos. You need him in the House voting with the party. But let's go on to this, because as all this is all happening, Congress has to figure out what to do about sending money to Israel. It seems both sides of the aisle. Uh, 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 from uber-progressives who don't seem to care 
if the country survives or not, have decided the U.S. has to send something to Israel. And I'll just know Yeah, there's about 14. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, there's about $14 billion uh, to replace the Iron Dome. And I thought uh, Speaker Johnson did a really good job in tying that to the 87,000 IRS agents that the Biden administration uh, forced on the American people, tie it to that funding. For once, we're actually voting on uh, dispersing money and doing a pay for, which is required by the House rules that the Democrats have ignored uh, my entire time here. And thankfully, Republicans are actually going to actually offset the spending that we're going to send to Israel with um, all of those weaponized IRS agents. So we're going to vote on that. I thought we were going to vote on that tonight. We're actually going to vote on that tomorrow. Uh, I suspect that that's going to pass the House and we'll send that to the Senate where Chuck Schumer is going to want to tack on Ukraine aid and tack on other things completely unrelated to the crisis and the war in Israel and send that back over. Yeah, and that's the thing too, right? The president has also said that he'll veto it, that there's no chance. He, they want a bundle. They want a bundle of course. so they can get what they want done, which is always the way they seem to do things, Congressman. Yeah, and they want to tie it to things that make it very difficult for a person like me to vote against. Uh, but we have a spending problem in Washington. We need to offset our spending. And if we're going to do the type of things that we need to do to support our actual ally, uh, Ukraine is not an official ally. Israel is. We need to support them who've been brutally attacked uh, by a terrorist organization. We need to do what we can to support them. But Biden and Schumer are going to do everything they can to tie this to other spending proposals that they have, which shows you exactly where their heart is. They care more about about uh, things like Ukraine funding when we need to be funding Israel uh, and all these other things they want to tie to this instead of what we need to do to move things forward. And Ukraine funding is increasingly unpopular. And I think it's uh, the, the Senate and Joe Biden, if it passes the Senate and the House, will be confronted with the fact of do you care, about, or care more about IRS funding, more IRS agents to go after more middle class Americans, or do you care about helping your ally Israel out? That's a really tough place to be. So they can make threats that they would veto this bill, but I think they'd be hard pressed to, to take IRS agents over the allies in the Middle East. Well, and it puts a lot of Democrats on the floor in a very tough position. Are you going to support our ally Israel or are you going to vote against it because you don't want to defund the 87,000 additional IRS agents that have only been in place since the, the funding's only been in place since the beginning of this year? So those are the type of things that they're going to have to make tough decisions on, uh, regardless of what happens on the Senate side. Uh, put those House Democrats on the, on the bill for whether they're going to vote to support Israel or not. And I'm sure there's going to be some uber progressives like Tlaib who are going to say absolutely not. Um, but the majority, I imagine, would feel that this is a worthy cause um, and long overdue. Congressman, we want to get to this because you served with the army in Iraq back in 2006, 2007. Our forces over there right now, they've come under attack by Iran proxy forces. Um, curious to see where you think this goes from here, what the reaction should be. Last week, I believe it was we sent on Friday 900 additional troops to help. But obviously, look, this situation is going to intensify. Iran is making it clear that they are going to come at Israel from all different sides. And this could get quite complicated for some time. Well, first of all, if we have American forces that are being attacked and we know exactly where those attacks are coming for, from, we should be responding in kind to defend our troops. Uh, we should be responding preemptively to take out those locations that are launching these drones that are attacking our service members. Since when in America did we allow our service members uh, stationed in installations who are being attacked and injured, by the way, uh, without responding in kind? It's taken Biden weeks to do anything at, at all, and uh, we need to respond in kind. If, if we know that these drone attacks are coming from Shia militia groups in Iraq or in Iran, then we need to take, take action and respond accordingly to protect our service members who are deployed over there. You know, it goes back to this issue that Joe Biden released the $6 billion, John froze the $6 billion. They've yeah. all said they could refreeze the money. We see that's not true. It seems like that money's gone. But minimally, he could enforce our sanctions on Iranian oil and say, listen, you can't sell this oil to China. And it seems like Joe Biden's not doing any of those things and no. just letting our servicemen and women take incoming fire. Yeah, just the sanctions alone, and I don't have the exact number in front of me, but this just the sanctions alone have opened up billions of dollars in revenue to the Iranians because they're now able to sell oil that they otherwise wouldn't under the Trump administration that actually had sanctions on uh, Iranian production of oil and gas. That's the type of action that we can take in a diplomatic fashion to really uh, put the screws on Iran and not allow them to be able to fund this type of activity. But we're in this place where we are today because of the decisions that the Biden administration 
administration has made to appease Iran, and that's not and should not be the public policy of the United States. You know, they've made to the tune tens of billions of dollars as a result of not enforcing these sanctions. I thought the same thing when the Russia-Ukraine conflict was about to happen, too. I was thinking to myself, why is he threatening sanctions? Why don't you use sanctions now to deter them from moving in? And as I see this get worse, I see, you know, American troops going over, even if in small numbers. I'm saying, why aren't you imposing and reinforcing these sanctions as a first step, not a last step? Real quick, Congressman. Yeah, absolutely, 100%. You can uh, avoid a lot of this activity by strong leadership and strong economic sanctions that this administration is not doing, that the Trump administration did, which is why you didn't see this type of activity under President Trump. One of Florida's finest, Greg Stubbe. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate yeah. it. Good to see you.